Hi, today I want to talk about locking in Lucy. Locking is a problem or is necessary if there are more than one requests running on your website. But what is not that uncommon, of course, there are multiple users visiting the website and making requests at the same time. So if there is only one request, you don't really need locking because you're always the only one using a resource. Locking gets necessary when you use a shared resource. That means a resource that can be accessed by more than one request or thread at the same time. That could be, for example, the application scope or session scope or um, server scope. All these scopes are shared between all, all requests or it could be uh, the file system, the data source and so on. So all this shared resource can uh, get problems when they are not properly locked if it's when it is necessary. In my example, I don't make multiple requests because it's hard to do for, for showing it. So I make, as you can see here on line four, I make multiple threads. So what in the end is the same, it's just that one resource is accessed by multiple threads or processes at the same time. You see here in my example, I it's about the application scope. I have initially have a token set to zero in the application scope. So then I go in that that function is called five times, as you can see here. And because it's open in a thread, it's running parallel. If you want to know more about threads, there's another video about that. It's run parallel and it's incremented by every set, so the thread increments by one, stores that back to the application scope and the local scope, then it waits for 10, 10 seconds. That means all these threads do that at the same time. So after it has waited for 10 milliseconds, it increments again the value. So if there is only one thread, it should be only incremented by one. Then it compares the, what it has in the application token with the local token it had stores above and that has to be one less because that was done the one that was uh, before it was incremented here so it should local token should be one less and if that is the case it outputs fine otherwise otherwise it outputs something wrong here when I execute that code it writes maybe I have also to point out it writes to system out, that is, it writes out to the console, not to the browser, because also here it's to the, to the console, because, um, the browser, when you, when you run within a thread, you can't write by the thread to the browser. So we get the output in the console. And you see, everyone is reporting something is wrong. So that means it was not only the, that token is, is bigger than just one. And the reason is we have these five threads. Everybody comes in at the same time and everybody increases application token by one. So the first come in, set it to one, the second to two, to three, five, four, five and so on. And then it increments after 10 milliseconds again. So we have at least here, we have five. Then it, the first one that comes here has six. Then it has six versus one, but of course it's more a bigger difference than one, so it fails. So the problem is that this code uh, block is executed by more thread than once, and that screws up the application scope. And there's a simple solution for that. Here we have the same code. With one difference, we have here a lock around that code that does this multiple steps on the application scope and it locks that code block with the scope application. That means only one thread can access this block once um, and the other, the, all the other have to wait until that thread is done. And that is limited to all that threads that have the same application scope. So threads with a different application scope could enter. In our case, we of course, we are all in the same application scope, application context, so only one can enter at once. 
So when I execute this and we go again to the command line, you see now it's everything is fine. What was happening again? The first thread was coming to the lock. There was no open lock, so it could enter. Uh, execute, increment the application token, wait 10 milliseconds and increment again and then it was only incremented once so it exit then after it was executed the lock was free for the next one so the next one was entering so there is a is a line of threads waiting to enter that that lock and only one can enter at once so it only increments once and everything is fine here we have the same with the session scope so in in the previous case we, we did uh, write to the application scope but maybe you want to, to do the same with the session scope so that that means you don't have to to lock out every um, thread with the same application scope you can simply uh, lock out every set with the same session so when there are multiple users on the website they don't get locked out only the the threads that share the same session so you have for example, um, having multiple requests by the same user at the same time when you have um, frames or whatever that, that you have multiple requests. So that uh, is less limiting than the application scope. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. You see, I, I increment the session in the same the session token in the same way we did before. So execute in that. again everything is fine and just to show that it is really the lock that does this when i remove the lock here and we execute again and we see the output something wrong here again everything fails as soon that changes so the lock is necessary in that case. These two examples we did so far was with the the application scope and the session scope, and because of that we had had a lock on on the scope. So that is very helpful when you do everything with the scope. But of course, you not only need a lock for scope; it could also be for other things. Here we have an example with files. So I create a, a file pass here. Then we have again this five uh, uh, five threads done, but in that case we don't lock by by scope. We lock by name, and the name is the, also the name of the file. So I can say, okay, only one can access that file file at a time. So when it comes in, it initially have written zero to the file. Uh, when I go in, the first thing is I read the file, then I have the initial number, then I increment that number in the file, I wait again 10 milliseconds, then I read it again, then it should be still the same, so because that thread did not change that fact. But of course, if there are multiple threads, they, they will all, all change that, and then these two numbers will not be the same, so the lock avoids that problem so that only one thread with that file with that name can access at time when i execute that when we show the output again you see everything is fine and when we remove the lock so multiple thread can access that file and we execute it again. So maybe I press twice, I'm not sure. You see something is wrong now. So one one was fine, but the rest was failing. So the lock also here is necessary. So to wrap it up, uh, locks are necessary if you access uh, a shared resource um by multiple 
threats at time and you have there, there is uh, maybe I have to point out that scopes are thread safe, but that means only that if two threads are writing to a shared scope at the same time, Lucy can handle this. If you have a regular would would have a not thread safe scope, that you can end up with with scrambled data in the scope. But Lucy can handle that. So that single access to the scope by multiple threads. Um, Lucy can handle that, but of course, if you have two independent access on a scope, the 10 milliseconds apart, that's for Lucy are two completely different accesses. So it doesn't, cannot know what is the right way to handle that. So you have to do that in your code with a lock. If you, if you have non Atomar access to the scope or any other shared resource, you have to handle that in this way. I hope this video was helpful to you. Have a good one.